I'm Kay and I'm a late bloomer. There's something so intriguing about growing peppers that attracts so many people, including me. I was determined to outdo my first year success last year, and I did. But it took a lot of TLC. <laughs> I got started on January 8th with several varieties mostly sent to me from friends. With only window light and no grow light set up, it was slow going for a few weeks, but by the end of February, things looked promising. A month later, it was warm enough to start moving them outside in the afternoon filtered sunlight. Almost immediately, tender leaves were attacked. I sprayed often with soapy peppermint spray. They left the filius blue plants alone. Finally, it was time to pot up my peppers. I reused cups from last year and my custom potting mix. I made quite a mess on my front porch. My pepper babies. One hour of direct, cool morning sun, and then you'll go into the shade. By late April, they were still only taking in indirect afternoon sun and morning sun. I got help with bugs from lady beetles. It was a big job, but I got all the peppers into their forever homes of three gallon size cloth pots on June 1st. Two weeks later, of my four front yard plants, I had peppers on my overwintered Sweet King of the North and blooms on Phileas Blue. The balcony plants were starting to respond to the summer heat of June. This is a Phileas Blue pepper it has these lovely little purple flowers and tiny leaves. What do we got here? We got peppers. Let's see. Looking good. This is crushed glass that is inert and is supposed to form a barrier to fungus gnats getting into your soil. Looking good. Just gave them compost tea spray and uh, watered, so we'll see how they look in a couple of days. By July 4th, there were good-sized peppers on most plants, and I was watering every two to three days. I used seaweed fertilizer in the water and watered till there was some standing water in the tray, as that would be soaked back up within an hour or two in the heat of July. There are three ways to determine if they need water. With a moisture meter, the lift test to see if the pots feel light, or if the leaves are limp. It's best to water in the morning or evening, but if the leaves are limp in the middle of a hot day, don't wait until evening. Give them what they need. Even with spraying for bugs every two weeks, there was some pest damage, but no infestations, <laughs> like last year. What's most interesting about peppers is they grow in so many shapes, sizes, and colors. Some peppers, like Hungarian wax, grow straight up. As you can see, most of my peppers are up on a balcony, and, um, no one gets to see them but me. My Hungarian yellow wax peppers are ready to harvest. These are gorgeous. That's the orange Thai chili pepper, my only one. And it's huge, but it's the only plant that hasn't had any blooms or chilies. But it's still growing, so I'll leave it alone. My first pepper harvest. <laughs> Wow. <laughs> this is what happens when you baby your pepper plants. They really produce.
first big pepper harvest with one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight varieties. I also have orange Thai chili and Caribbean red habanero. Those two are super hot and Sweet King of the North, uh, which are yet to mature. <laughs> so that's Margaret's and Sweet Apple. Kind of looks like an apple. And these are Aruba Hybrid. And these are Jimmy Nardello. And that's one little jalapeno medium. Check out my Phileas blue peppers. There's more red than purple now. Love it. The chemical compound in peppers that makes them hot is called capsaicin. And there is a level of units per pepper. My peppers, in order of hotness from least hot to most hot, are um, jalapeno and um, Hungarian wax. Those are 10,000 units. And then I jump up to um, cayenne in Phileas Blue at 50,000 units. And then I have orange Thai, which is 150,000. And my hottest pepper is Caribbean red habanero, which is 400,000 units of capsaicin. And I have no intention of eating one of those. <laughs> but I thought, because this is the first time I've grown Phileas Blue, and I survived eating a cayenne last year, be sure and watch my Growing Peppers part one and part two episodes. Dairy products kill the heat from peppers. So if you get something that's too hot in your mouth, drink a glass of milk or um, any dairy product will cut that heat. Don't drink water. That exacerbates the problem. So let's try this Phileas Blue, okay? have the milk standing by. <clears throat> That's hot, but um, <laughs> cheers. <sighs> you expected a bigger reaction, right? <laughs> The waves are still coming. The capsaicin is most concentrated in the interior flesh of the pepper. So if you pop the whole thing in your mouth, you're going to get much more of a sensation than if you just nibble on the end. Capsaicin is recognized by the Environmental Protection Agency as a pesticide and is used that way. And um, you really need to take care in handling really hot peppers and any kind of uh, application that has capsaicin in it because it can irritate your eyes and your skin. Not to mention your lungs and uh, <laughs> it causes swelling in the mucous membranes of the lungs and so forth so uh, <sighs> watch out. <laughs> If you have tips for growing peppers, please let me know. And please share this episode and help me inspire more people to grow their own food. I'm Kay. I'm a late bloomer. Thanks for watching. See you next time. <laughs> Is that just like so cute? Hmm. It doesn't even taste hot. Whole thing. See what happens. <clears throat> yeah. Mm. I think my tongue is swelling. <laughs> oh wow. <clears throat> that whole pepper might have been going too far. <clears throat> I probably.
probably should have done this at the very end after I was finished talking. 